Climbing mortgage costs are sending more would-be buyers to the sidelines. According to new data from Toronto's Regional Real Estate Board, home sales in the greater Toronto area fell by nearly half in June compared to June of last year. How much further could they fall as interest rates uh, look to continue to rise? And what effect could that have on prices? For more, we are joined now by Peter Norman, Chief Economist at Altus Group Canada. Thanks so much for joining us, Peter. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be here. So I just wonder what you make of the, you know, the weakening that we, we've seen so far, um, particularly in, you know, in the Toronto area. I mean, rates have gone up, but like I mentioned, there, there's a, likely, a strong likelihood that they're going to keep going up. No, that's uh, absolutely true. I mean, a, a number of things are happening on the macro right now. Uh, that ultimately is sort of affecting not just the uh, consumer, the house uh, buyers or consumers' ability to buy, but also sort of the confidence, uh, you know, to be into the market right now. So we certainly have those interest rates that have traced up uh, quite a bit. Now, a lot of that is a little bit exaggerated because they're coming off their pandemic, you know, very low rates. But uh, but we've certainly kind of surpassed now uh, where rates were prior to the pandemic. And that's uh, that's having a little bit of a bite on on demand. But there's other factors as well, of course, that are making co consumers a little bit cautious right now as they uh, consider the marketplace. Well, what sort of factors are you thinking of? Well, we have consumers worried about inflation, of course, and uh, the longevity of that. We're looking at inflation being, you know, continuing to be more of a shorter term uh, transitional issue right now. A lot of it still has to do with international factors, but nonetheless, it is a concern to uh, uh, to us. It's a concern to consumers and it's a concern to the Bank of Canada. And that's what's uh, prompting a lot of these higher uh, rates right now. Uh, so consumers are concerned about that and they're and they're also concerned about uh, a potential Potential slowing economy. Do you think um, you know p people deciding not to buy right now is um, more a, a, a budget thing or more of a let's just wait and see how this plays out thing? Yeah, I mean, you're going to have a variety of circumstances about, about the way that this kind of interacts with different different uh, people out there or different uh, market players that are that are out there. But in the end, it's not surprising when you see interest rates go up that you start to see a bit of a softening uh, overall in the marketplace. And that's certainly what we've seen in these Toronto numbers that we saw come out today. We've seen and, and actually the way that those numbers have played out also is uh, is is typical of this type of thing, because really what you've seen in these numbers primarily is a softening in the number of transactions and that's often what you get in a in a market where there's a little bit of uncertainty or or where there's you know some reason for you know for buyers to pause some reason for for sellers to pause as well so mm -hmm. we've seen the number of transactions fall way off of course price also is starting to adjust a little bit i have uh, said before on this show that as we go into a period of uh, higher mortgage rates uh, given where housing has has been certain Certainly in the Toronto marketplace where housing has been in the last few years, it would be, you know, it, it would be reasonable to see perhaps prices roll back about a year's worth of gains. Uh, and I think we're still kind of on track for that type of uh, model. Now, these numbers that we saw come out today and in June set, show that uh, that housing prices have basically rolled back about six months or so. They're, they're now sitting at around where they were at the beginning of the year. It probably suggests that we have a little bit more, uh, a little bit, little ways to go as well. There's also the issue about where interest rates are going, right? Mm -hmm. We know that the Bank of Canada likely is going to increase interest rates uh, even more at the policy level. Uh, but I'll also point out that uh, on the, you know, for the five-year mortgage rate, a lot of those gains, I think, have already have, have already been priced in. So we may not see as much uh, further uh, rise in the five-year rate as we are going to see, for instance, for variable rate mortgages or other things that are tied to prime. How important is it, Peter, to watch uh, listings, like the, the, the volume of listings, um, in terms of, you know, uh, a reflection of, uh, you know, people's finances? I'm thinking of the sellers, you know, how, you know, desperate they are, perhaps, of, of getting putting their house on the market. Um, you know, how important is it to watch that that volume? In, in Toronto, listings are are, are pretty pretty stable compared to where they have been. Um, and in Vancouver, we saw uh, in their data earlier this week that listings are down. I just wonder what, what can you read into that? Yeah, I mean, in the 
uh, in the Toronto number, in the Toronto case right now, actually, we're starting to see li listings rise. I mean, mm. they've risen quite a bit off of uh, off of last year's really, really low numbers, and so part part of that is how is how uh, uh, rare listings were, scarce they were right. about a year ago. But nonetheless, we are starting to see them rise a little bit. Um, you know, I I think the longer term context has a bit of bearing on this uh, on this issue as well. I mean, we have a slowing economy. We have interest rates kind of, you know, start starting to surprise people on on the upside. So you're going to get the market kind of kind of pausing a little bit. You're going to get uh, certainly get a lot of that heat come out of the market, and that's certainly what we're seeing. Uh, Toronto, under the underlying, the longer term picture is that the market still is pretty is pretty good in this region. I mean, we still, you know, although it's slowing, we still have we still have population growth. We have remember uh, an underlying housing supply shortage. I mean, that's what led to this issue of housing prices being a bit elevated in the first place, uh, this kind of, you know, and, and, and we, you know, uh, under, uh, no matter how you slice it, we need a lot more houses over the next 10 years. So we're going to be, you know, building and, and supplying them. So, you know, the short term issues around how much, uh, how many listings there are, uh, et cetera, it will, will certainly define where the market goes for the next few months. Um, I think that if you're in a position right now where you, uh, want to buy a home and you're, you know, perhaps hoping that uh, that prices will go significantly further, further down and that you'll hold off. I think probably if you wait too long, you'll we'll start to see them coming coming into a rising cycle again. I think this is more of a soft landing and uh, and we're going to find ourselves uh, kind of pulling out of this as we, you know, as, as soon as we get through this uh, period of elevated interest rates. Peter, I also wanted to get your take on what's happening in the uh, um, office uh, um, world downtown Toronto, because we saw new data from CBRB today showing that the office vacancy rate hit a record in the second quarter. It rose to 11.9 percent, um, you know, perhaps being attributed there to the, uh, you know, the the rise in um, working from home, but also um, maybe some weakness showing up in in, uh, you know, the the uh, uh, types of companies that would be working in in office towers. How, how are you interpreting um, the sort of state of office vacancy in, in downtown Toronto? Yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> this is a, a pretty good question, and there's a lot going on there. I don't think that we're seeing a lot of weakness right now from the uh, from you know from the employment growth perspective. I mean, okay. employment growth may pause a little bit as as the economy slows down for a few months, but that's not that's not the kind of uh, uh, contraction that would uh, have a lot of companies you know shutting up or or whatever else. That's that's not a big factor in play right now. Certainly, uh, the the continuing transition towards hybrid uh, work modes amongst different uh, office using organizations, whether they be companies or government departments or uh, or other organizations, uh, is having an impact right now, and those are showing up in those numbers that you just cited. And to be frank, we're going to see you know this continue to play out for in the in the years ahead as more and more companies kind of make a decision about how they're going to adjust uh, the way that they interact with the office. Now, is the is that a, is is that a, a situation that's that that we need to be overly concerned about? Probably not, because this is happening a little bit slowly. Uh, companies are not all making those decisions at once, and of course, we have underlying growth in the economy. I mean, certainly in the longer term sense, over the next five years, we'll have a lot of a lot of office job growth. So uh, that continues to be a, a kind of a positive factor. But the trends that you're seeing in that market right now are probably ones that are going to be pretty important over the next five years. And that's that better position, newer office buildings, what we kind of call A and double A class buildings are the ones that are in highest demand. And that's where you're seeing a lot of those transactions. That's where you're seeing, you know, certainly a, a, a much, much more lease activity and lower vacancy rates. But it is, uh, you know, this is an opportunity not only to perhaps compress your space that you're renting a little bit, but as other companies compress, you're seeing companies moving their their leased space from older buildings into newer buildings. So the question isn't mm -hmm. so much about what's 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 going to happen downtown or with the sector overall. The question more as we go into the years ahead will be what are we going to be doing with those older older buildings, perhaps in areas that are not so uh, in demand for office uses. Yeah, 